Helmut Kaba, and I'm the proud mayor of the city of Perth Danboy. I'm excited to partner with Amerigroup to support Read Across New Jersey. As a father of two young children, reading is very important in our home because it nurses our children's minds and imaginations, and it creates a desire to want to learn. Today I will be reading one of my favorite books, Anybody's Game, as I'm a big fan of baseball. Anybody's Game tells the true story of Katherine Tubby Johnston, who became the first girl to play Little League Baseball. We will discover together of a young girl who stepped up to the plate and showed the world that some rules were meant to be broken. Let's get started. Anybody's Game, Katherine Johnston, the first girl to play Little League Baseball by Heather Lang. Girls don't play baseball, Tom said. You can't try out for Little League. Why not? I'm better than you, Katherine scouted her brother. She knew she could throw and catch and clap the ball better than most boys. But deep down, she knew Tom was right. There were no girls in Little League Baseball, and the coaches would never let a girl try out. It was 1950. Girls jumped rope and played hopscotch. Girls went swimming and played tennis. They wore dresses and helped their moms in the kitchen. Girls did not play baseball. But Catherine loved everything about baseball. Running her fingers along the stitches of the ball, the musty smell of her dad's mitt, the crack of the bat when she hit the ball right on the sweet spot. Catherine had been hooked on baseball ever since she was six when she sat on her dad's lap and listened to her first Yankees game. And it's going, going, gone! Her dad imitated announcer Mel Allen. Go Yankees! Catherine and her dad yelled. On game nights, she wore her dad's old baseball glove and punched her fist into the soft leather. Someday, I'm gonna play for the Yankees, she said. You just wait and see. I bet you will, Kit Kat. Her dad smiled. I bet you will. By the time Catherine was 10, she knew the Yankees players like she knew her favorite comic book characters. From hit and runs to sacrifice bunts, she learned all the baseball tricks and all the rules. By the time she was 12, there wasn't much about baseball that Catherine didn't know, except how she was going to play on a real team. Lots of boys snickered at Catherine with her baseball glove, but some of the neighborhood boys noticed she had a good arm. They needed more players to get a game going and asked her to join them at the sandlot. Catherine stretched her small fingers into her dad's glove. Her families didn't have enough money to buy her a lefty glove, but she didn't care. Thwack! She caught the ball, then took off the glove and sipped the ball back with her left hand. Catherine dove for the grounders like Scooter Rizzuto. She slugged the ball like Jolton, Joe DiMaggio, and she slid head first. Catherine practiced with Tom. She practiced with her dad. She practiced and practiced. By the time she was 13, her muscles knew what to do before she did. Every night, she slept with her mitt, bat, and ball and dreamed about playing on a real team. When Tom announced he made the Knights of Columbus Little League team, Catherine clenched her fists. And when he left for practice, her tears welled up like the roar of the crowd. Keep still, her mom said. I can't braid your hair while you're squirming, but it's not fair. Then stop your belly aching and do something about it, her mom insisted. I read in the paper they're holding tryouts today for a new Little League team. Catherine knew she could have 
made the Knights of Columbus team if she were a boy. And she could make this team too if she were a boy. She hated watching from the sidelines. Cut off my braids, Catherine said. What? Her mom gasped. I'm gonna try out as a boy. Her mom found the kitchen scissors in the drawer. She held out Catherine's braid and paused. Go ahead, Catherine closed her eyes. Snip! Her mom cut off her first braid. Snip, snip! She cut off the second. Catherine ran to the bathroom and stared in the mirror. Not bad. She sure wouldn't miss those pink bows her mom always made her wear. Catherine grabbed her dad's glove and borrowed some pants and a baseball hat from Tom's room. As she tucked her short hair up into her hat, she froze. Oh no, who ever heard of a boy named Catherine? Her mom gave her an idea, an idea that just might work. Catherine sped off to the field. Her heart raced faster than the bike pedals. Would the coach believe she was a boy? At the field, she didn't know any of the boys. What a relief. As she walked over to the signing table, her stomach danced like a knuckleball. She hoped her mom's idea would work. Picking up the pencil, she took a deep breath. Then she signed in as one of her favorite comic book characters, Tubby Johnston. The coach hit fly balls and grounders. When he called out, Tubby, Catherine lined up her pop flies perfectly. She shuffled sideways to block ground balls. She scooped up balls, took off her glove, and fired them back. Nothing could get by Tubby Johnston. In the middle of tryouts, coach called her over. Had he figured it out? Here, try this, coach said, handing her a lefty glove. Thanks, coach, she said, relieved, and slipped the glove on her right hand. On the third day of tryouts, coach put her at first base. Catherine was small, but she could stretch far jump high. No bounce was bad enough for Catherine to stop, and no throw was too wild. At the end of trials, coach announced the players who made the Kings Dairy Little League team. Tubby Johnston, he called out. Catherine had to stop herself from squealing. She was on a real baseball team. That night, she told her dad the news. He hugged her tight. That's my boy, Kit Kat. You will be great out there. Even Tom was a little impressed. Playing baseball on a team was heaven, but it was tough pretending to be a boy. Some of the players asked her if her name was really Tubby. Did they know? What would happen if Coach found out? All the worrying was taking the fun out of baseball. One day at practice, she got up her nerve. You gotta know something, coach, she said. I'm a girl. Coach was quiet. Maybe he was thinking about what the boys would say or what the other teams might think. Maybe he was thinking about kicking her off the team. You know, he said, you're a darn good player, and we need you at first base. When the team found out, they didn't care either. They cared more about winning. Every night, Catherine admired her uniform and counted down the hours until her first game. At last, on June 19, 1950, the Kings Dairy team took the field for the first time. Catherine hustled out to first base. Some people in the stands booed. 
Word has spread about Tubby Johnston. She pretended not to hear them. She showed them that girls can play baseball. Catherine stressed and jumped and dove for balls. A reporter praised her fielding and wrote, she can hold her own with other male members of the team. Catherine wished she had a chance to clap the ball, but the pitcher walked her three times. The Kings Dairy team came out on top that day and went on to win lots of games. The next season, Little League Baseball will create a new rule saying girls are not eligible under any conditions. For more than 20 years, girls will struggle and fight to play the game they loved. But for one summer in 1950, Katherine Johnston played first base, batted third, hit home runs, stole bases, and slid head first. Many people crowded the stands to watch a girl play Little League Baseball. A girl who never gave up on her baseball dreams. The end. Wow, what an inspiring story. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Let me know what you think and share your comments below. Thank you again to Ameri Group and to all of you. And remember, the more that you read, the more things you will know. The more that you learn, the more places you'll go.